we've been working on developing our own engine oil to release into Australia. We've also been working on the sump for the 300 series to give you a larger capacity and extra cooling in that car. So in this video, we're gonna go through where we're at in the development, as well as who we've had come on board as an expert. So it only made sense that when we were looking at doing oil was to grab some experts and really understand about what to do with the oil. I've come across a guy called Rafe Brighton. So Matt first reached out to me, um, I think it was via LinkedIn actually. We have these things called Certified Lubrication Specialists, so I'm a CLS. I'm also a Machinery Lubrication Engineer. I'm a Qualified Machinery Lubrication Analyst, Level 3 for the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. I'm a technical editor for their monthly magazine. Um, and I'm also on the exam board for the International Council of Machinery Lubrication. So what I love about working with the Just Autos group is their sort of like passion for wanting to go like the extra mile, right? So all he indicated was really that there's been an issue with some of the Land Cruisers kind of nationwide. Um, it's something that he was looking into and he wanted to know could this be related in some way to the engine oil? Uh, and if that's the case, what might the remedy be? We handed a lot of information over to Rafe and Rafe has looked through and analyzed the data that we've collected from these cars over the last five months. We now know what we need to improve the oil and to get it to a certain level where uh, we believe it's the right foot forward. It's about you know, providing a product that we've tested and make sure that it is adequate and it's gonna do the job. Rafe has just done a podcast with us recently. Once upon a time, diesel engines were relatively simple. Yeah. I advise you to have a listen to that and it gives you a really good understanding of where we're heading with this. So let me give you a quick recap on where we started with this journey. So how we got here, we had a couple of 300 series come in with some engine failures. Now there's a whole other video on YouTube and explaining about what happened there and the reasoning around it. But it led us down this path about really trying to understand what had gone wrong, but also it led us down the path of developing the oil. Let's get this car up on the hoist behind me and I can start to show you the sump that we're designing that goes with the whole story around the oil and cooling. So the test that we're currently running, we have about a dozen cars out in the field and they're all running around with different applications doing different things. And that's anywhere from towing really extreme heavy loads to everyday driving as a soccer mum car. I also wanted to make sure that the oil was gonna stand up to the heat and conditions in Australia, as well as towing. If you can't get your oil changed and you're going over by a couple thousand Ks, you really wanna make sure that that oil is gonna be suitable to carry you those distances, but also has the approvals of companies in Australia to make sure that it is meeting the criteria and it is approved by them too. We're analyzing the oil, how the oil degrades, what degrades the oil, and getting a really good snapshot of what is happening there. And that real data takes time. It's not something you can get overnight. And we are getting into the final stages of where we've collected a lot of that oil samples from and a lot of that data. It's mostly the Land Cruiser 300 series that we're focusing on. Um, and so that's where all the oil samples are sort of coming back. In some cases, it's people using the stock OEM 0W20. Some people have chosen right to put a 5W30 in their own uh, in their own engines as well. So we're starting to see data come back from that. Oil analysis can only tell you so much information, but when you try and combine that with some of the engine teardowns. Uh, that Matt's been doing for some of the failed engines, you can sort of start to build up a bit of a picture. Where you start to get into the interesting bits is the elemental analysis is what we call it, right? So what we're looking for is signs of wear metals that might be in the engine. So mo mostly the focus is on iron, right? Because that is the largest component of the engine. Now iron's an interesting one because you want to do, there's two different tests that test for iron. So in the one that gives you all the metals, that's something called ICP. And literally what they do is they kind of try and vaporize the sample and the light that the sample gives off tells you about the different metals that's in the sample. But when we vaporize the sample, only particles which are very, very small get vaporized. So actually we can only tell if there's iron that's up to about 10 microns in size. So unfortunately anything bigger than that, which would be kind of indicative of fatigue failure, that's actually invisible to the test. So we have another test which is called the Particle Quantifier Index, or PQI, um, which tells us about the total amount of iron content in the sample. And the way that they do that is they basically pass a magnetic field through the sample, and using the Hall effect, they can tell what's the total amount. So that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. So we're standing under the 300 series here and we're looking at the sum. So this is the bottom of the engine at the moment and this is our prototype. We have gone through quite a few revisions here and there's a lot of things to consider. Other people's components are gonna be put around these as well and making sure that's gonna fit and not interfere. So it's gotta have the depth, the cooling, but also the strength to be able to hold up any impacts. We're able to get all the oil out of the sump when draining, so it's got a slight angle towards the sump plug. We have 
removed where the sump plug was originally in the factory one and slightly changed it in a different area. We've added extra cooling to the bottom there, which has helped with cooling. The biggest improvement here is the volume of oil that we're adding to there. This is a lot of components that come through here. J-Max are also developing a bash plate that will be around this, which will have some cooling flutes that go through and it will definitely help with air uh, coming down the bottom of that sump, but still providing the protection we need. I'm super excited for it and so far it fits beautifully and works with every combo that we've had so far. It is great because it holds eight liters of oil, so something very similar to what was in the VDJ. But if you're interested in a sump for your 300 series, uh, we have a waiting list where it'll be the end of June, early July of release of these sumps. Get in contact and um, get on that list. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see kind of like how this shakes out. This is probably the first product that I've ever been involved with, which is gonna be, make its way into like the consumer world. Usually I'm working on stuff which is for you know, large corporates and that sort of stuff. I think what is gonna be you know, fulfilling for me, I guess, is to get actual feedback from customers and people uh, and see how they, they respond to it. If you would like any more information on our sump or even our oil, uh, there's a lot of information online as well as our podcast that we've done with Rafe explaining about the oil that we're developing. If you have any questions, please give the guys a call at the front and they'll be happy to answer your questions. <laughs>